welcome to another exciting edition to Road City Hockey Presents. I'm in our neck of the woods, and you, sir, were a very talked about person towards the end. I'm a fifth year senior, kind of, well, it's my sixth year of college. Hey guys, we want to say thank you to our sponsor, Cut Shield, for bringing you this episode. Make sure you check them out on the link below and use the promo code for 25% off your order. Used by all 32 NHL teams and players, Cut Shield is the premier protective player clothing designed by players for players. Their innovative cut resistant clothing has prevented serious injury to numerous players, including over 30 NHL players. Cut Shield gives you the peace of mind to go out and play without worrying about injury. Use our promo code Grove City Hockey, all lowercase and no space, for an additional 25% off your order today. Welcome to GCH Podcast. I'm your host, Ben W. Stock, and with me is fellow ref Tom Ward. How you doing, Tom? Good. How you doing tonight? Oh, fantastic. Got the kids to bed. They're finally asleep. Uh, the fiance, <laughs> she's she's uh, she's crashing as well, so life is good right now. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you have uh, a six-month-old that is just wanting to fight everything right now. She's just yes. like... I'm so tired, but I'm not going to go to sleep anytime soon. Uh, my, my favorites were always when my kids were little, they would, my son predominantly would sleep anywhere. Like we had a, a giant Rubbermaid bin and I've got pictures of him passed out on top of it with it sealed with a blanket over him just sleeping. So seeing random places, your kids will fall asleep is, is, is one of the greatest things as a parent. You're just like, <laughs> how is that comfortable? <laughs> Because like if not. I did it now, I, there's no way I'm walking for like a month. <laughs> like I'm just like, okay, my neck is permanently this way, <laughs> or your back is just out. Yeah. yeah. Well, as a referee, your back is always out. Yeah, that's true. Yep. No that's one what... shows that courtesy of like, oh, here, let me hand you the let puck, me... ref. No, I'm gonna flip yeah. it up and hit you in the face with it. Yeah. Damn, every on. every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so how you been? You been good? Um, yeah, so real good. Some... So tell us a little bit about your journey uh, into uh, hockey. How did you get involved in hockey? Where was the first love that came from uh, from hockey with you? Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say my parents. Uh, you know they they really exposed us to hockey. Uh, Mom and dad are both from uh, South or West St. Paul and South St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh, so nice. uh, yeah, countless trips back and forth uh, to there. Um, and they, they just really developed that that love. And I'm actually jealous. Uh, my my mom, my dad, my sister, and her husband, and my brother, and his his wife uh, were at the Pens game today to oh. honor uh, Yager. And yeah. I couldn't go because I was working another hockey event somewhere else. Oh. Oh. Uh, and I, she, she was able to get tickets. Um, and she was like, do you want to go? And I was like, Yes, but I'm not going to be home in enough time to, to make it. So, uh, and that, it's funny that you say that because I actually watched that earlier today, and yeah. uh, and I'm sitting there and and as the banner is getting raised up, I just start I don't know I don't want to say start crying, but I started to yeah. tear up, and uh, not being a Pens fan, but I knew what the what he meant to the organization, uh, oh, you yeah. know him and Lemieux uh, in the '90s. And, uh, you know, just watching that, uh, and I was, it's about time because, uh, the man is just a, as a legend. Oh yeah. I mean, the number of years that man has played hockey at such a high level. Uh, one of the stats that I saw a couple days ago when they've been, um, I don't remember if it was the pens Instagram or somebody's posted that he's played with 38% of the NHL players of all time or something like yeah. that. Isn't that and crazy? That, that is mind blowing. That it's that close. I mean, thirty eight percent and forty. I mean, that's a substantial number of players to yeah. think about over the time. And I mean, I would have loved to have seen him stay with the NHL. I mean, I'm glad he's gone off and done his thing. But I would have loved to have seen 
what he would have done if he would have stayed in the NHL and continued the the path that he had. It was yeah, yeah. yeah and the crazy thing is that he's like ten years older than than I am. You yeah, know, uh, same same. My fiance, we were just talking about that. I'm like, man, he was born in '72, and he was just, you know, yeah. second in points only to to Gretzky, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, but I was just like, the, the man's had an amazing career, and he's one of the yes. the all time goats, uh, if you ask me. Oh, I would agree. Yes. Yeah, you know, especially with those uh, 90, 91, 92 uh, Penguins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's like right there. Uh, those guys were just phenomenal. I think what Cam Neely was even on the team. I think he was actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah I that yeah, was him. like Trottier, Paul Crowley. Yeah. I mean, oh, those couple years were like so just many juggernauts. Yeah, yeah. And then you had uh, your your goaltender was Tom Barrasso. I yeah, mean, yeah. Know, Tommy. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So. Um, so, so tell us a little bit more about uh, your journey. So, you got involved in in hockey from your parents, uh, who basically grew up in the state of hockey with Minnesota, right? Yeah. Well, did no, you, I, so I did grow up in Minnesota I, or no? I did not. I I grew up more here in Western Pennsylvania, okay. uh, and spent, I guess, I most of most of my childhood and adult life here. But we'd go up there for random things and like family functions and vacations and, and hockey camps and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I would say, you know, coming out of, you know, played, enjoyed it, but found roller hockey in college. Um, okay. and, and was like, this is really cool. So I ended up doing, uh, a, a, you know, playing up at Slippery Rock University mm-hmm. and, you know, they they have a rec center there. And I was like, oh, this is what we're going to do. So we were playing there and then we'd go down to a local rink down in uh, Pittsburgh called the Island Sports Center. And okay. it's now switched names. Uh, it's the Robert Morris Island Sports Center, uh, okay. but the same general manager whatnot. But um, yeah, so, I mean, that's where I kind of fell in love with roller hockey uh, during that time in college and whatnot, my father um, opened a hockey store in Cranberry, which is just north of uh, north of Pittsburgh, probably about a half hour or so. Um, had a great time uh, running that, but then, unfortunately, the NHL decided to take a strike, and uh, kids quit playing hockey. Was that like, the, the 94 season? No, this was in two the early two thousands. Like they were just like, yeah. yeah. Baseball was ninety four. Yeah, baseball was. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah, they, I, they went on I strike remember. and yeah they went on strike and everybody's like, okay, we're not playing hockey anymore. And you know Pittsburgh kind of shut down, but then there was that resurgence with uh, the Pens getting Crosby and Malkin and Latang and I'm sorry. Greatest of all time, <laughs> Flurry. Okay, <laughs> since we brought up Barrasso, yeah, Fle- yeah. <laughs> I want to see Flurry's number retired as a Penguin. But yeah, um, that would be know, nice. I ho- I just hope that he goes to Colorado because we need some uh, goaltender depth over there. That would Ooh. be sick. You that know? would be sick. That would be That's really a- sick. Yeah, I, um, I'd just be like, "Oh, that team would be basically unstoppable at that point." I would love to see the Avs pull that off. Yeah, their backup situation right now is just uh, it, it's it's brutal to watch. Yeah, and, and uh, Alex can only do so much. He he can only play yeah. so many games. It's not like it was back in the day where you could you could send out your number one goaltender out every night mm-hmm. and then just put your backup in there. You know, ten to twenty times a year. Yeah. Now they now it's they're pretty much splitting shifts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, you're gonna play this game. I'll play that night. Some days it's like. Are you guys rolling dice? Like, how is this happening? Of like, who's flipping the coin? Um, right. Who's going in? But yeah, it's. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's kind of where the the love came. Uh, played a couple years. I'd say probably two years through, like after college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, met up with a group of guys, joined a a draft league team. Um, you know, because it was I, I just I enjoyed it. It was a great time. Um, anybody that's played adult league uh, hockey. Uh, ice or roller, it's your, your your game slots. Quite honestly, suck. 
you're you're that you're that you're that ten thirty eleven thirty night on a uh, on a work night, and you're yep. just like, okay, do I go to bed or do I go to hockey? Um, you know, kind of those days. But you know, when you're coming out of college, you got all kinds of energy. You're like, hey, I'm gonna go. I can, I'll pull the all nighter and then go straight to work. You know, type yep. of deal. Um, but yeah, so that that's where that whole thing started. And then I would say after about two years of playing, uh, one of the referees was like, you know, hey, you got a good temperament. Why don't you take up, you know, kind of refereeing? Um, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's let's do that. So I started refing, um, started going to more stuff, got really into uh, refing uh, inline hockey, was working um, our local high school league. Uh, working games for them, working adult league, and then got some opportunities to start traveling and doing uh, other events um, here in the United States. So it was kind of neat. I went out to California a couple times and and worked the Junior Olympics. Uh, they had it in Vegas one year. That was uh, a mind blowing experience to me to to go to Vegas to work a Junior uh, Olympics game yeah. um, and whatnot. But met a lot of friends, a lot of people. Um, still keep in touch with a, a large number of them through social media, which is great. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's where that kind of started. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the, the big part that I've seen from being a player to a referee and then also, I was also a coach. Uh, I coached for, uh, uh, two local high schools here in, in Pittsburgh, uh, for a number of years. Um, and then really enjoyed that opportunity to kind of to foster that that love for a sport uh with kids and it wasn't so much you know hey i want you to fall in love with roller hockey so this is all you're ever gonna do Mm -hmm. um you know it was i'm not you know yeah i'm teaching you the game of of hockey but i'm also teaching you to be a young man or a young woman uh because i had a number of females play for me over the years too and it's you're trying to teach them to be good people um, you know, cause there, there's just, there's not enough, there's not enough of them out there, uh, not to stand on a soapbox there for a second, right. but, um, you know, you, the, the kids, you know, that I, that I coached, uh, were never able to treat a referee, uh, negatively. They weren't allowed to talk back. They weren't allowed to get smart with them. Um, and that's just a way of showing respect for the game. Like penalties happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, and I will say I've had a number of kids that I coached that had a really, really hard time comprehending that sitting two minutes in the box is not a, an earth shattering thing. It's part of the game. Right. Um, and I think that to me was, was, was huge, uh, to be able to do that as part of my hockey journey to try to get that. Uh, and funny enough. A, a number of those kids have gone on to coach. Uh, you know, whether it's... <laughs> this makes me feel really old right now. Whether it's their own kids playing hockey or it's their um, kids playing another sport. Uh, and it, it's neat to see see that aspect come kind of full circle to see them back into it um, doing that. And a number of them have actually taken up refereeing and some of them ref with referee with me uh, <laughs> quite often, actually, probably more than they'd like. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I've seen you out there, and uh, I had to say you're probably one of the better refs that I've seen uh, in a long time. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I've been I've been around, you know, I'm in the inline industry for quite some time. Um, I, I've even coached overseas. I've even refereed overseas. Uh, I was the head referee in, uh, uh, you know, of an entire country. And uh, wow. so it's pretty. What country? I got to ask. Namibia. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, uh, when I was there in 2012, they, uh, they didn't have a head referee at the time. And uh, I just. Were you out? To... Were you out there with a buddy of mine named Matty Woe? Matty Wojak? Uh, he would have been there after I got there. Okay. All right. Yeah. So when I was there, it would have been, um, oh, so, uh, um, Mers? Sobel, Brian Sobel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. And then, uh, I, I followed him and, um, 
there was one other kid from the Pittsburgh area or the the um Philly area, somewhere in there. No, it's the he was in, he was from the Pittsburgh area. Morrison? Um, no. Uh I think again he came after. It would have been okay. like two thousand fourteen or something like that. Okay. Um but yeah. Cause, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, so I was there. Yeah, it was um, neat. I kept hearing, I kept hearing guys going over there and growing the yeah. sport, and I'm like, that is awesome. Yeah, and and man, those and it's crazy because those kids are freaking good. I believe they're not, it. They're no, they're no slouches. I mean, their their junior women's team just dominated Team USA uh, earlier this year, and I there was mm-hmm. a couple of the girls that I had coached, but they were like five, six years old when I was over there. Yeah. And yeah. now they're they're still playing, and it's just it's amazing to see that. And then if, especially some of like their older siblings, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm those kids are just phenomenal now. You know, they're playing on their the senior men's teams and, and stuff like that. So it's mm-hmm. I always I always cheer for the the Namibians when uh, when I see them out there because uh, I know how yeah. hard they they put the work in and uh, and how much they love the game. Well, and anytime you can see somebody that has that genuine love for the game, you just want to see them be successful. Oh, uh, absolutely! You know, like I, I have kids that started that played when my son had just started playing. My son, I could finally get him on a team at four. He'd been skating yeah. since two, That's and awesome. um, he he made friends with a bunch of them, and he still keeps in touch with those kids, even though he's quit playing. Um, you know, but. Some of them are now playing in the pro divisions at all the big major tournaments and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's neat seeing those kids that I knew when they were six and seven and eight and going, oh, my gosh, I remember watching you figure out how to stick handle for the first time. <laughs> and I remember the first time you hit the crossbar, and you lost your mind with the celebration. Yeah. <laughs> to where, you know, it's stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's those moments that you just look back on, you're like, oh, my gosh, I, I, I was a part of that. Like, that's just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, it was it's interesting because you know like the uh, different styles of uh, like how they run their uh, games overseas versus how they run yeah. their games over here, over there they're always on time. Oh yeah, I mean they're on time, and uh, and but they were all, like uh, I remember the <laughs> the couple of times that I had to call you know some penalties, and, and they were played pretty good, but I mean the one guy was like. Ref, come on. I know you had to make the call, but uh, at least open your eyes, please. And I was just like, hey, man, like, I get it, you know. <laughs> I, I, I joke with guys all the time when they're like that. I'm like, dude, this is the biggest prescription lens they can give me, and it's my visor. Yeah. You yeah. know? I'm they, like, yeah. You know, <laughs> and they kind of take they, they take a step back to like, wait, what? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always find that uh, you know it's it's nice because of my uh, hearing disability. I don't always hear what they say, and uh, it's probably better off that way because then I don't have yeah. to really give them give them my actual chirp back. Yeah, I, I I've gotten pretty good with the the, the sarcasm uh, or sarcastic comebacks for for some yeah. of the guys for for over the years. Yeah, yeah. So now, so tell us a little bit about uh, that. Um, from your experience, I can tell you a little bit from mine. What's the worst uh, offender? Uh, well, like what age group? Because I can give you my, I can give you my opinion. Uh, so it's, I, got... I, it's a youth division. I'm really? saying, for, I'm saying, fourteens to sixteens. Okay. The, and and here's why: those kids, for some reason or another, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, what year it is, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not going to say oh twos were the worst, oh right. fours, sixes, whatever. But it's just that age group. It's, it's you know? that age, that age group. They're they're getting a little bit more testosterone going in their body. They're hitting puberty. They think they're him. They're like, I'm him. It's like, <laughs> right? As you say, you're like your voice just cracked, kid. Like you're not him, but it's cool. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and the earth revolves around them. Right. Um. But then when they get to like the 18s, they 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 mellow out. They understand that hey, this is you know they're 17, 18. They're like, yeah, this is fun. I'm here for a good time. Uh, but I would say that 14 group, uh, the 16 start figuring it out because they're they're getting it a little bit because some of them are playing up uh, and realizing when they run their mouth, an older kid's gonna put them down. 
Yeah. Um, but those 14s are just, it's just like, what yeah. are you like? Why are you freaking out about this? <laughs> and, and a lot of them at that age, dads are still the coach. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, yeah. and, and that's, know. that's almost the worst part of it too. Yeah. They just yeah. like, they allow it to happen. Yeah. And they, they don't want to correct them. Right. They, 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 and it's like, buddy, like we're, we're all on the same team. Like I'm not, I'm not calling a penalty on your kid. Cause I don't like your kid. Your kid's a great kid. <laughs> he, he just hooked a kid. I'm sorry yeah. that his stick took a kid's feet out. I'm right. sorry. Uh, but I did do that. No, he did. Your kid did. Yeah. Now, f- for me, uh, it was always the adult league guy who thinks he's way better than he really is. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> that guy who's playing in in the gold level, but he's really a tin player. Yeah, and he throws up that the the most dumbest penalties, and then gets yeah. mad at you because you have to call that penalty, and yeah. he just doesn't understand. Like, hey, bro, like your you know your skill level is not where you think it is. Yeah, the the I mean, I will I will say that like for the for the adult players that their their penalties are just you, like the stuff you see in adult league hockey is quite honestly just mind blowing. But from a like just a whiny little oh I didn't do that that <laughs> there's your fourteens the 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 adults they just start yelling at you like okay you had a rough day at work dude just 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 go home it's okay just go sit yeah. in the car. Yeah. Or you know, I I I actually said this to a kid earlier today. Um, I, he was like really upset about something, and I was like, "Buddy, did somebody just not give you a hug today? Are you good?" And he looks at me, he goes, "Oh my god, I didn't get a hug today." I was like, "Whoa, like wow." Um, you know, so it's it's it, anytime you can get a player to, to quit thinking about what's going on, right. you win. Like that's yeah. a I win I win that game all day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah and then it, it also redirects their attention and then they yeah. can refocus and get back into the game and start playing. And yes. sometimes when you do that, they play yeah. a lot better. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. Uh one of one of my favorites and I'm not gonna say the word uh because I know we're on a podcast, but the the F me uh statement with guys like miss a shot or they make a mistake. They, that's the immediate thing they say, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're, you're not my type, dude." But but thanks for the <laughs> offer. Um, and, and yeah, it's like whoa. And they kind of they they look at like what, and they immediately like their their demeanor changes. They're quiet. They're calm, and they're just like, "Okay, I can play again." It's yeah, like, yeah. "Hey, we all make mistakes, man." It's like Gretzky said, "Yeah, you, you got to." Sh- uh, what was his famous? I can't even think of it right now. Um, you miss a hundred percent of the yeah. shots you don't take. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So you got to take the shot. So if it misses wide, as long as it doesn't miss fifty feet wide, you're good, man. Like just keep putting the fuck on net. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes those adult players do miss uh, fifty feet wide, and you're just going, "How in the heck can you be that yeah. wide open in front of a net, wide open goal, and you do, yes. and you put it up in the air, you know, in front yes. of the scoreboard, like, huh?" You're yeah. three feet in front of the net. We're, How do you do that? We're, we're not playing soccer. The net's a little smaller. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> it's yeah. like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> or or the other one I always love is when the guy runs into the boards by himself, and there's like another player <laughs> there next to him, and they turn and they put they look at you like there should be a penalty. I'm like, no man, there's a wall there that you just ran into. That's yeah, not that like, guy's fault. Do you, do you want to see the replay of what I saw? Because yeah. there was there was nobody within thirty yards of you. Yes. You know, like everybody was still on the other side of the court. What are you, what are you yeah. talking about? Everybody else stopped after you ran into the boards to make sure you were okay, <laughs> and they continued to play. Once they realized you, they you started to to move around. Everything was okay. Yeah, well, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so now do you obviously do ice hockey still, right? Do you ref yes. as well? Okay. Yes, I do. Do you do you prefer roller over ice, or do you are you more of a? It doesn't matter. Hockey's hockey to me it, right now. Ho- ho- hockey is hockey to me right now. But the the part that um a lot of the ice that I've been doing the last five six years have been the the role of a mentor, mm-hmm. um, which has been which I've really enjoyed. Um, my my last couple of schedulers for 
uh, for things have given me that opportunity to, to really take that role and, and make it what I want of it. And I'm a school teacher uh, as a career. Uh, so it came pretty natural to me to, to work with kids that obviously want to show that the, that they want to be a referee. So for the ice mm-hmm. side, I do a lot of mentoring for games. Um, whether I'm, I'm the kid's partner and like we're, we're two man in a system where I'm like, Hey, I, I got a free night. I'm gonna go jump down and do a three man with some kids and just work with them. Uh, or I'm, I'm watching eight U hockey, uh, doing mites with cross ice or half ice. And you're just talking to kids and telling them, Hey, this, or a lot of times I'm spending time talking to coaches, telling them, Hey, you know, it's just a game. Like let, let your kids play. They're going to fall over. It's okay. Um, and, and sadly, that's what I spend a lot of the time doing when I'm a mentor is telling coaches, hey, relax. Like, the kids are okay. The kids are having fun. That's yeah. the goal. I said, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I've, <laughs> I, after shifts of doing that, I, I go into the scheduler's room or, you know, go see whoever. And I'm like, I made a referee today. Because you, you, you see a kid that comes out is just scared. Uh, and you and you get them into the mind frame of the game. You're skating behind them. Hey, keep moving with the play. Keep going here. Go this. Um, and you know you're trying to get them to be more and more vocal with everything. And that's that's the part that I really enjoy. And uh, from doing uh, the the ice side of it. But I mean, it's great having kids remember you. Um, you know, with oh my gosh, we're, you're my favorite ref. Da, da, da. Like you do. And I'm like. Uh, okay, is it because I dance to the music your mom's playing in the penalty box? <laughs> uh, right. while, 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 you know, while I probably should be lining up and get it on the blue line? Uh, you know, those type of things. But it's also just being real with kids. Like, if you call a penalty, tell them what they did wrong. Right. Um, you know, like I had to do it this weekend at a college event. A kid came high and literally took both hands, put them to the guy's chest. I was like, buddy, have one stick. Go Have your stick down. And go to the puck, and you're clean, you know. So it's it, no matter what age, you're still teaching the game, uh, and I and I think that's a, a lot of the, the the stuff, you know, for for what I do, and I think that's what a lot of people like about what I do is I'll t- I'll tell a guy, you know, hey, you did this wrong, don't do it, and, and they fix that play. Um, but Roar has given me a lot more opportunity uh, to to referee than than ice um and it, it's not that i don't like one over the other uh i've just had more opportunities to um meet more people uh for it um it, it's it's given me an opportunity to see uh different things and like i said meet meet other people but i've had kids that i've worked with that are that were roller hockey refs that are now doing um, AHL games and like high level stuff, like levels just below the NHL. Um, that I, I couldn't be more proud of those kids. Uh, there's one. Um, he he goes up to Erie every once in a while to ref. So I've gone up and just watched him as a referee. Dude, I've gone up to an Erie Otters game just to watch him ref. Yeah, uh, awesome. not even to go watch. Just not even to go yeah, watch just... the the Otters. Just to go watch him on yeah. the ice. Uh, and, and, and you know th- those aspects for me. Are huge. Uh, like I said before, I started out as a coach, um, you know, was refereeing the whole thing. But it's it's about seeing the sport grow, uh, and it, it just is. And um, you know, and with me mentoring refs, I'm not mentoring a ref just to mentor a ref. I'm not just mailing it in and oh, okay, hey, you're dropping pucks really well. I'm gonna go sit in the penalty box and where it's warm. No, it's I'm out there skating with you. I want to make sure you're getting better. Uh, because I'm training my replacements. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have much left in this body. Okay. The tank's running kind of low. Um, so it's like finding that, but like the roller hockey aspect is, is a lot of fun just because there's more for me, it's been more opportunity to meet people. Like you've traveled internationally to, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to say it wrong. Namibia. There you go. Um, but like I've met people from Australia that I keep in touch with. Uh, I was just talking to friends that I met from um, Great Britain, uh, actually a couple days ago. Uh, we were talking, 
it, like, it, it, like you just in people from like Hawaii, California, um, you know, like all over this country. I have friends that that I know from being at a roller hockey tournament or or refereeing them or my son playing with them at some point in, at a tournament. And it's just it's roller hockey has so much potential to be bigger than it is here in the United States um, than it already is. Like it's big in pockets. Mm -hmm. Um, Some pockets are bigger than others. Uh, Some areas it's sadly dying Mm -hmm. um, just from, you know, rinks closing and things like that. But it's, there's, there's a love there and, you know, it's, I'm. I, I don't want to see it go. I don't. Um, but to to see how strong it is in some of those pockets, and in some of those events, and some of the kids that play both, I, I think it's just fantastic. I mean, you know, we we've got a, a a first round draft pick who played in a lot of for the NHL in the NHL draft who plays yep. uh, played a lot of roller and was actually playing roller after he signed his contract and got drafted. Yeah. I was like, what? So yeah. I mean, there's if if kids that play ice also play roller, it's amazing seeing the differences in those because I've seen kids do both. Um, mm-hmm. Countless kids do both. Roller helps you with your stick handling so much, and your ability to see the whole uh, rink and be able to read the the whole the whole rink so much better than an ice game. Um, you know, and one, it lets you play the full rink from a young age all the way up. Whereas with the way USA Hockey has done theirs, it's you know they now do the cross ice and then the half ice. Um, but I mean, I, 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 there's just so much more ability to grow uh, in that aspect. But I would love to see kids that have played roller hockey or even adults that play roller hockey give back to the sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, go go volunteer. Teach a kid something, um, you know, on, on what they what they could do better. But yeah, I mean, those are all things that I think would be huge for this. And I know, like the Grove City Hockey Group, you guys are are trying to grow the sport through through stuff like this, yeah. like this podcast and the live streams. Uh, and I'm all for, I'm all for that. Like any event that you guys are at and I'm doing, I'm always clowning it up for the camera. I'm waving at the camera. I've said hi to people. I'm like, uh, I'm like, honey, I love you, and I yell it into the camera <laughs> or whatever. Um, and like one of my favorite photos that I that I have, uh, and, and Matt took it, and it's me at center dropping the puck, I think in a championship game, mm-hmm. and I'm literally winking at him as I'm dropping the puck. Uh, it's one of the photos, fo- and like, I'm not gonna lie, I asked if I could have the photo without the watermark on it. And they're like, no, I don't know. I was like, really? Come Come on. on. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Come on. uh, But like those type of things are just, are, are, uh, but it's fun. Like it's neat to see people go back and try to help grow the sport. Like our local high school league, there's probably 10 coaches now that are coaching that played in that high school league. So like that's second gen coming back and, and just, you, you you can see the difference in the way teams that have had coaches that played mm-hmm. compared to the coaches that are dads that are just like, yeah, it's okay, John Johnny, you 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 didn't get hooked. That ref is wrong, right. um, you know. But yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, like you you hit some pretty interesting uh, topic points there, or talking points um, with ice and roller. In the in the off season, you should be playing roller. Um, yeah. Just because, a, not only, I what was it? I was just reading something that uh, um, uh, Peter Dale had just posted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Peter Dale out of Wisconsin with uh, Farm Tough. Farm Tough, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Farm Tough hockey, and mm-hmm. he was saying the average ice time or the average uh, ice time versus the average w- with ice and roller. Um, yeah. Ice time was like it was 70, 70 hours in a season, whereas yeah. roller, roller hockey, the average puck possession is like seven hundred hours mm-hmm. of puck possession. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
you know, and uh, if you are one of those guys that uh, are watching this episode um, and you're on the fence as to, okay, why would I want to, uh, to play roller? It's because of that fact right there. A, yeah. you take away a guy. Now it's four on four. You're starting to see that uh, in with the NHL with the three on three, how it just yeah. spreads out, opens up. Now it becomes more of a puck possession. Well, now you're starting to see more of a less of a dump and chase mentality and more of that puck possession. We'll just yeah. bulldoze our way through that blue line, drop it back, have the other guy who's trailing pick up that puck, and then you guys are off to the races because as soon as because then everybody can get into their positions that where they need to be. Correct. It's very similar to um to uh, like a basketball play uh, as yeah. well. You know, it's crazy how how hockey and how basketball are so similar that nobody even, or that not many people realize that. Yeah. And, and the other part that that's big, and I've seen it a couple times in uh, now in the NHL mm -hmm. uh, where some of these coaches are starting to bring some of the roller hockey aspects into their game where it's like, Hey, we're going to bring it back behind the net. We're going to sit here for a second. Then we're going to bring it out and get the breakout going. Um, but I mean, puck possession is huge. And I mean, if you can get your team to to buy into, you know, off season, let's go play, you know, a roller. Whether it's a spring league, summer league, maybe you go to a tournament or two. Um, but it's amazing the 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 skill level that you'll improve, not just from an individual standpoint, but from a team standpoint, from a trust and be able to pass that puck back and forth and be able to see. Uh, you know, the overall puck control, because it is watching dump and chase is just painful. The other one is, and this is one that I, when I'm reffing, sometimes the coach in me comes out too, <laughs> and I'll see a kid, I'll see a kid try to blow through a kid with the puck. And it's like, dude, just chip it off the boards and go around him. Cause right. that's what they do in roller hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody wants to do that. Cause it's like, oh, I'll never catch the puck. I'm like, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not accusing you of skipping leg day, kid. I'm just asking you to do a light chip and go. Right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's pretty wild to see kids that do both, and if they can get a few of their teammates or even their line mates to do it, to watch the chemistry over just explode. It's insane. I know how much that that goes with. But yeah, the the hours. I didn't realize Peter Dale put that out. I didn't see that. On uh, yeah, Farm it was Tough, uh, uh, news I, feed. I, yeah, it was uh, one of the guys that I had uh, did a podcast with uh, from El Paso had reposted it. Um, okay. just a couple of days ago. Um, yeah. yeah, it was the El Paso inline uh, crew, and uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but do you know? Guess I want you to take a guess how much an inline season is down there in El Paso, Texas. That gives you ten games plus playoffs, an entire season. How much do you think that costs? Because I can guarantee you're overthinking it. I'm gonna say 800 bucks. No, it's 40. What? Yeah, 40 bucks. Okay, I'm hold not, up. Do, I'm not. Do they even have referees there, or are they just calling their own fouls like backyards? Uh, they have referees there. Do they have referees that's, there? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it insane? That is absolutely insane. But I, know, okay, but I, no, I do up. know that do they, they have... are trying to grow the, their their league, and I do know that they have quite a few teams. Um, so I don't. But uh, it's a city owned uh, facility. That would be why. Yeah, they can keep it low. Okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy though? Forty bucks. Now, do they have to pay the referees cash when they oh, show that up? I, that I don't know. Because that's so a lot of the rink or not rink fees, but a lot of the. League fees go to pay for referees, right? Um, and I know I was paid cash when I was refing. I wish I could get paid cash. Uh, I wish. Um, but they like anytime a, a city owns a rink, it it helps the kids, mm -hmm. it helps their families. I mean that that is huge to grow a sport. Uh, yeah. is when the cities own the the facilities. Um. So many of them are privately owned, which is not a bad thing. Hey, thank you for all of you privately owned facilities uh, for hosting the stuff. But 
it, it that adds additional cost because you have additional pieces there um, compared to a city doing it. But forty dollars, forty bucks. That's great. Yeah, ten games okay. plus plus two playoff games. I, I, be, I bet you get a couple comments saying I'm moving to El Paso to pay 40 bucks <laughs> for my team to play. I know I would. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I, could, if I was still playing, I definitely would be making that move. But I also said that I'd be moving to Minnesota, too. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to shoot down Minnesota. I, I, if, I yeah. could, if I could move somewhere, that's probably where I'd end up. Yeah. Yeah, I was well because uh, last year when we went to the Let's Play Hockey Expo, it's the first time I'd been to Minnesota, and uh, so but my first pro game uh, or pro team was with uh, a bunch of guys from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing, for, we were playing for the Boston Storm out of the Major League Roller Hockey, and okay. uh, and uh, yeah, those those guys were were an interesting crew. I mean, they were good. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but uh, you know, I I don't think I was really ready to be <laughs> be in that position when I was. I just where, have to be at the where right was the let's play? The right where time. was the let's play? Where was the let let's play hockey show at this year in St. Paul? Uh, the, was it St. Yeah, Paul it was, or uh, was it? No, was it the XL Center? Uh, XL Cent, uh, oh, okay. Center, Energy Center, nice. whatever you want to call it. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was crazy because because uh, you guys you guys have one of the Hanson brothers down your way. Yeah, yeah, and I have yeah. a Hanson brother in my neck of the woods. Oh, get out! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, Steve Carlson's up this way. Okay, and uh, so yeah. he was he was on the flight, uh, but I didn't say anything to him. <laughs> but I know so, I know he knows that I was there at the at the Let's Play Hockey Expo. Oh, that's good. Yeah, uh, yeah D Dave Hanson is who we have yeah. here in Pittsburgh. He mm -hmm. runs one of our local rinks. He's a general manager, uh, yeah. and he, and this is wow. Um, Growing up, he played baseball and hockey with my my uncle and my dad and against my dad and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but like those my parents like so when he when they come to the rink to watch my son play or my nephew yeah. play, um, and he, he's always like hey. Da, da, da. But I recently found out that he had had dinner or something at my my grandmother's house because uh, she lived right at the corner of the park that all the kids would go play at. Oh, okay. uh, so, I, so we were talking about that, and he's all. Anytime I see him, he goes, "You've been back to the cities? Have you been up to visit anybody uh, and whatnot?" Because, uh, and he, he always asks because my relatives own uh, a char house there in St. Paul mm -hmm. on uh, West Seventh Street. It's called uh, Mancini's. Okay. Uh, and I, I told Sean when you guys were there, go there, tell him who you are, tell him, you know. And I don't think you guys made it, but yeah. No, he didn't. Sean didn't say anything about that. Otherwise, I would have made him take a, take us there. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, I was oh. right around the corner from where we were at. No, I, yeah, you're you're literally like a block and a half from it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been like, bro, what are we doing? Let's go grab some. Oh. Where's Where's my phone? I'm sending him a text right now. <laughs> there you go. Tell him I'm very disappointed in you, Sean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, but it, it's um. But yeah, it's amazing how, like I said earlier, it's amazing the connection that hockey and and, and, and just sports in general bring people together uh, yeah. to see it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like you said, because you know you got a chance to to have roller take you all over the country. Uh, yeah, I've had I've had roller take me all over the world um, as yeah. well. You know, so I mean, like, and I've got friends in in Cali. I've got friends in. In New York, yeah. I've got friends in in Florida. I've got friends down in Texas, um, you know, and not you know Pittsburgh uh, and mm -hmm. Philly, you know Detroit, everywhere in Chicago. I mean, you yeah. name it. That you know, I I've got some. I've got at least a connection in that general area. Yeah, or within, yeah, it's, or or within a, an hour or two from that local rink. Yeah, and and I think that to me is is huge. Like. Uh, you know, it to see to to be able to go to an event and be like, "Hey, how you doing? Let's let's hang out. Let's 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 go get something to go get something to eat." Or you know, are you working the next game? Are you are you playing? Um, but it's also fun to have kids remember you, like as a referee, and you go to all these different events all over the country, and you run into kids that remember you, and you know, you're talking with them. Uh, one of my favorite moments from this past summer, okay. Uh, I worked a tournament up in actually in your neck of the woods. I was up in Kalamazoo. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I was at the uh, 
Oh, what is that ring called? It's got three the, three rings. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's the Wings Event Center. Yeah, yeah, Wings Event Center. Um, great. The 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 main rink was was fantastic. The yeah. other rink was was a hot box. Like I was sweating to death. But <laughs> uh, so I wor- I worked a game. I worked worked this uh, this tournament called Legends. And mm-hmm. it's like they they custom order the jerseys like it's all yeah. like different theme characters and stuff. Yeah, they had but, uh, I believe they had like the Frosted Flakes and the Apple yeah. Jacks and the yeah. Cinnamon Toast yeah. Crunch kits that yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was really cool. This, this coming spring is uh, uh, Sesame Street characters. Yep. So I I was like, okay. So I said the guy that runs it. I was like, you got to do a custom jersey. If you didn't, if you didn't do Bert and Ernie. Make the referees Bert and Ernie. Like that would be hilarious, <laughs> right? Be oh my great. gosh, right? Like it would be that would fantastic. Be that would be amazing. Yes. So so we so I sent him a message. I was like, please make this happen. But he hasn't, yeah. he hasn't got back to me yet. But um so anyway, so I worked this event. Uh and I, I did little kids like eight U, six U, all the way up through the twenty ones and uh and whatnot. Um I go down to Tampa for mm-hmm. tours national okay and i'm doing games and whole thing ha- doing my thing having a fun time and this this little kid is just banging on the glass i'm like do i like i don't recognize you kid like who are you <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing the game game ends the dad is one of the coaches he comes up to me he goes hey you were at legends right and i was like yeah why he goes my son who's over there is your biggest fan and i was like <laughs> Wait, what? what? He goes, like, I- I'm like, no. Like, see, so I-, I skated over with dad. We're talking the whole thing. I was like, what What took you guys? And I was like, where are you guys from? He goes, we're, we're even further south. We're in Naples. Okay. So they were, f- they were sa- further south of, uh, of Tampa. And I'm like, what took you to Kalamazoo, Michigan right. for a yeah, hockey no tournament? Like, <laughs> like, for a weekend event. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> so he's like, oh, we, 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 we you know, we're, we're, we, we know the guy that runs it. We had to go. And I was like, yeah. All right, cool, cool. So we're talking, and I get over to his kid, and I'm like, I get down on a knee, I shake the kid's hand, and I was like, Hey, my name's Tom. You know what's yours? And he's like, This is so great. And I was like, Well, do you got a camera? Like, does and Dad's like, My cell phone's in the truck. And I was like, Cool. Next game, bring it. We're getting a photo. Yeah. I literally brought the kid out onto the rink. We took a photo. I mean, highlight yeah. of the summer. That's um, awesome. Was meeting that kid. I it, like it. Yeah. I, I wish, I wish you could share his name. I wish you could do all that stuff. Uh, but if you watch this little man, you you made yeah. my entire summer. Well, hopefully, he. I, I'm pretty sure if he's going to be doing some uh, Google searches, we'll make sure that uh, you know yeah. he uh, finds this video. And uh, shout yeah, out I to hope, the little guy. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope I hope I see him again at tours or even at Legends here coming back up. Uh, actually, this year I think it's at Fraser. Yeah, yep. It's at uh, Frazier at the Big Boy with the five sheets. So yeah, uh, I don't. I mean, that'd be nice if they could pull five sheets off a roller. You know, oh, uh, that would be so neat. I mean, there's there there's only a couple events that I think try to get that many sheets down. Uh, the the I, biggest one I ever did was six, uh, and that was that was a Junior Olympics event. Yeah. Uh, I want to say 2009. Yeah. Uh, Could you imagine that though? I mean, like, wow, they'd yeah. be able to get those games over with quick. It was a 10 day event. Yeah. Uh, oh. And it was wild because they, um, they actually got the Honda center for oh. that event. Cause they had uh, the international, the Führers, uh international yeah. tournament there during the yep. same time. That yeah, was, yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool. That's crazy. But yeah. So, all right, Tom. Well, I've taken enough of your time for this evening. Uh, it's already well past our bedtime. Nah, it's all, hey, it's all good. We're sitting here talking about hockey. I would love to do this again if you want to talk more because we for didn't really sure. get to share any stories about like some of those fun events that we all know and love that happen with some of those adults. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll but we'll uh, we'll definitely have to uh, to do a part two uh, here in the next couple of weeks. How's that sound? That'd be fantastic. All right, brother. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of GCH Podcast. I'm your host, Ben W. Stock. With me was uh, Tom Ward, fellow ref. How you doing, brother? Good. Bye, guys. We'll see you guys on the flip side. See you.